I need to find a radical new way to teleport information. I'm designing the future of transportation, a teleporter. As any sentient being knows, teleportation is the only way to travel. But is it actually possible? Single atom teleporters have been made in the laboratory. Pretty mind-bending. But they're not going to be beaming me to Mars anytime soon. Stand by. To be practical, the design needs to be based on solid science. I mean, who's going to hop into an unreliable teleporter? Even science fiction fans have their reservations. Dying is a major risk in teleportation, I would say. A risk of you just never rematerializing. That'd be sad. I probably wouldn't be the test dummy for anything that could potentially get me to not exist anymore. They're right. My design must be safe. Transporting the actual atoms is just too dangerous. The Star Trek transporter had an energizer coil to emit waves of energy that analyzed the body. They were definitely onto something. I really believe the key is to turn the body into data and have it rebuilt at its destination. In 1974, Dr. Raymond Damadian invented something totally ahead of its time, the MRI scanner that extracts data from the human body. His machine could form an excellent base for a teleporter. I'm now inside an upright MRI machine. I'm surrounded by a magnetic field 12,000 times more powerful than the Earth's. This is the key to peering inside living tissue. As the scans turned on, I'm immersed in radio waves which push and pull at my atoms making them send out tiny pulses of energy used to generate detailed images of my body. This is what we would traditionally call a multi-slice image through the skull and neck. An MRI image is like a map. The map is made of pixels, and each pixel reveals the position and properties of tiny groups of cells. The side of each one of these pixels can be, uh, with our current technology, of the order of a quarter of a millimeter on each side. The smaller the pixels, the more precise the map. This machine has pixels which are smaller than a single pinhead. But for my teleporter, I'll need an image where each pixel is the size of an individual atom. The big limitation at the moment uh, is the uniformity of the magnetic field. To get atom-sized pixels, we need to direct these powerful magnets equally over the whole body. So if we can make that magnetic field more uniform, the smaller those pixels can be. The technology behind the modern MRI scanner is perfect for my teleportation system. With bigger magnets spread evenly over your body, and higher resolution sensors, an advanced MRI should one day be able to generate an atomic map of a human body. The first stage in my teleported design is a scanning platform set within a ring of powerful electromagnets. To pinpoint individual atoms, it needs a field many thousands of times greater than the Earth's. Just like Scotty's design, my teleporter will have an overhead device producing pulsating radio waves to turn atoms into data. The machine could accurately scan my body down to the atomic level and turn it into data. But it's a lot of data. I'm going to assume that in the future, one atom could be described by one computer bit, a single zero or one. A standard DVD can hold 40 billion bits, but that means to hold the atomic map of a single human, I need enough disks to hold 35,000 billion gigabytes. That would completely fill 3,978 Empire State Buildings. How on earth am I going to transmit all that? I'm designing a teleporter. Using the science behind the MRI machine, I could turn a human body into pure data. 
but getting all that information to its destination is not going to be so easy. Data is sent around the world along thousands of miles of this stuff. These are optical fibers. Each cable contains a steady stream of digital zeros and ones, created by chopping laser pulses into tiny bits. Light is made out of photons, which move through the air and optical fibers in waves. Each cycle of the wave, up and down, can carry a single bit of information. So the smaller the wavelength and the faster it vibrates, the more data can be packed onto a beam. Laser light cycles up and down over a trillion times a second, so it can carry a lot of data. But even with a million beams, it would take a year to transport a human being's data. It would be faster to walk. My teleporter will beam a set of instructions so that my body can be rebuilt at its destination. But to pull its weight as a genuine means of transportation, I need a way to transport those instructions extremely fast. Carrying information aboard beams of light is not going to work for my teleportation design. There's simply too much data. I need something that vibrates even faster. And the answer is x-rays. They have a shorter wavelength than light waves, so I can pack a million times more data onto each beam. Even so, to get the transfer down to a second, I'll need a hundred million x-rays. That would make a huge beam many feet across. But unlike light, I couldn't pass the x-rays down optical fibers. They're so powerful, they could leak out. I need to send the x-rays up into space, where a network of satellites will direct the beam to its destination. But that's where the next problem starts. How will I turn all this data back into a human being? Get more sci-fi science online. I believe teleportation is possible, but I've got one major problem to solve, how to turn a staggering amount of pure data into a living, breathing person. With just a stockpile of atoms and a set of digital instructions, my teleporter machine should be able to fabricate any object. Something like the replicator from Star Trek would do the trick. A machine as advanced as that is maybe only a century or so away. Futurologist Mike Treder is already thinking about how it might work. Whether you call it a nanofactory, a replicator, a fabricator, could have different names. The idea is they'll be able to assemble things atom by atom with molecular precision. It seems almost certain that we'll be able to create complete living organisms at some point in the future, although it's very challenging. We could get an idea of how this might work by looking at one of today's state-of-the-art 3D printers. First, the object to be assembled is scanned, creating a 3D digital image. The system then breaks this complex data into simple 2D slices, which it sends to the replicator-style assembly machine. The device fabricates an almost exact likeness of the object layer by layer with almost surgical precision. Now this machine obviously has not created an exact copy of me. This is just a three-dimensional reproduction of my face. Think of it as a 3D photograph. But in the future, using similar principles, it should be possible to create a living, breathing copy. Using cutting-edge science and a little bit of science fiction, I think I've got the design for a truly awesome teleporter. I wonder what the sci-fi fans will think of it. Today, I'm going to present to you the first workable design for a transporter. And we're going to answer the question, when are we going to be able to zap our molecules into outer space? The world's first teleportation passenger steps into the scanner. It's made of non-magnetic materials to resist the powerful magnets. Now, pulsating radio waves start the job of converting atoms into pure data, 35,000 billion gigabytes of it. 
I need to transport that mountain of data to its destination. You have about 10 to the 25 atoms inside your body. Now, an ordinary laser beam cannot carry that amount of information. Instead, I pack the data onto a beam of x-rays many feet thick and fire it straight as an arrow up to a geostationary satellite above the Earth. It would be possible for someone to intercept this beam and make an unauthorized copy of the person. So I've added an encryption device to keep the data secure. Next, the beam is sent hurtling at a fabricator station on the other side of the planet. The data arrives, and an advanced quantum computer starts the billions of computations necessary to open up the instructions. It has to be received by a computer that can handle this vast amount of information. Now the data is unraveled, a molecular assembly machine begins to piece everything together. The scanner opens, and an absolutely perfect copy of our teleportation pioneer steps out safe and sound. But this leaves us with one remaining problem that could inspire a science fiction movie all of its own. The body at the departure point is still there. He was only scanned, he wasn't dissolved. Things could get complicated if teleportation really takes off. Luckily, we've got a while to iron out that little wrinkle. So there you have it. In the next few hundred years, we'll be zapping our molecules through space. It's really interesting. I really do see it happening. We're going to see it. We're going to see it sooner than we think. Volunteer. Um, if I can interview my double before they kill me, <laughs> yeah, I would. Once it was perfected, I would definitely jump on board. It'd be nice to have a spare of me hanging around, but I don't know. I think one of me is enough. <laughs> that sounds like a risky business to me. I'd certainly want to be on a sedative. I'd love to try it. I'm the laziest traveler. Could it work? Yeah. 